Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's Monday morning, the beginning of another work week and surprise surprise I was I got off the uh, light rail and I was heading to the International Passenger Terminal and all of a sudden I saw can you see what I'm seeing? A cruiser in the International Passenger Terminal. So uh, welcome back to the cruise industry here in Australia. It's been on hold for a couple of years, but uh, you know, times are slowly changing back to how they were on Saturday night. There was a magnificent concert at the Big Top over there at uh, Luna Park where Anna Bissy, who incidentally is 64 years of age, which I can't believe, performed her heart out. My daughter and my son-in-law went to the concert and they said it was an absolute uh, you know, scream of a night, uh, high energy, high quality, and they saw a lot of people that they hadn't seen for quite a while. So what I'd like to do today is uh, kick off today's Jim's 5am Club with another book summary. And today's book summary is entitled The Making of a Manager. The Making of a Manager by an author known as Julie Zhu. Julie Zhu wrote a book on management, um, which I guess is, is good. I love reading about management, um, and I always have, because it's one of those things that intrigues me, and I'm sure intrigues you as well, because we're all trying to become better managers in our lives, better managers of ourselves, better managers of our families, of our work environments, and ultimately better managers when we all combine our skills together of uh, the economy, the community and society in general. So the author, Julie Zhu, kicks off her book summary uh, with a, an interesting quote. And I love this quote and I abide by it and I live by it. Where she says that people will never forget how you made them feel. She goes on to say, people will forget what you said, people forget will forget what you did for them, but people will never ever forget how you made them feel. And I guess it's important as a manager uh, to understand that you are in a position of responsibility and accountability because you're impacting people's lives, you're impacting people's livelihoods on a daily basis. Um, so your interaction and your contribution to your role is significant in more ways than one. So the author goes on to say that simply put, a manager's job is to build a team that works well together, support the members, achieve their career goals and create processes that get things done effectively and efficiently. I like the way she's been able to uh, articulate in simple terms what the uh, job of a manager is because uh, um, a lot of people, I guess, get confused over time thinking that a manager is more about their self goals and achieving things for themselves but more importantly it's getting things done through people uh, and with people rather than any other way. I've seen over time that sometimes the wrong people are placed into management. Now people who are task masters, people who are really good at doing their job, doesn't necessarily translate cleanly and effectively into becoming a good manager. 
So uh, management is uh, something which is needs to be revered, needs to be respected, because it is a role that involves people, and uh, a role which, as I said before, impacts their livelihood. So it's important to get the right people into management, into management, and not to have people in those roles who are not suited and who are square pegs in a round hole. So just bear with me, I just dropped my notes. So um, it's important not to have the square pegs, the big fat square pegs in the narrow, narrow circular holes. So you need to be able to lead which means you need to be able to also guide and influence people, um, which is what leadership is all about. Leadership cannot be bestowed on somebody. You just can't put somebody in a job and say that they are a leader. Um, at the end of the day, a leader is somebody who people need to be comfortable in following and wanting to follow and um, it can't be something that you know you just get a title of manager or leader and expect people to want to follow you and to uh, to work with you and for you uh, leadership must be earned and um, as my manager Greg Gleason used to say back in the old days says James you know, I can fill out the paperwork and promote you. But at the end of the day, um, you need to have a lot of people who want you to be in a leadership position rather than just me or you. You need to have uh, influenced the opinions of many people along the line for them to want to have you in leadership and to want to work with you and for you. It's not about just doing the paperwork which is a powerful, a powerful lesson that I learned early in my days. So being a great manager is a, is a great honor, as we said, and an honor which needs to be respected. And um, you need to have a handle on yourself, your superiors and the team. So you, you need to be in control. And I see Albanese, I, still, I see the Labour leader who uh, incidentally I don't have very much respect for as a leader because he, he, come, he comes across as a bit of a dud. He can't manage himself, he certainly can't manage his party and to, uh, to be in a position of leadership um, so close to an election is, uh, is scary. Now um, I'm sure that uh, if Labour win the election as Paul Murray said last night on television now they will quickly quickly uh, swap him out and put Christina Keneally into that position um, even though Christina is probably not the right person uh, she's a bit of a, um, uh, you know, she's got her challenges as well but at the end of the day she's much much better at dealing with with uh, people within her party and, um, and, and the media, the what Albo is. So the key skills for leadership uh, and being a manager, according to this author here, is that you need to be uh, great at hiring. You need to hire exceptional leaders. You need to ex bring people into your team who are brilliant at what they do and great at building up the team around them. You need to build self-reliant teams, teams that can work and function effectively uh, using their own capabilities and not to be dependent on outside influences. You need to deliver clear and unambiguous vision and be great at communicating. And over the years I've worked for many uh, tremendous organisations, organisations that are leaders in their field, organisations that have both 
great leaders and crappy leaders, dud leaders. But uh, what you do find is, you know, when you're working in an organisation that has great leadership, it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly who those great leaders are. So the author here goes on to say that you need to be great, first of all, first and foremost, first and foremost, you need to be great at managing yourself. Uh, you need to in, uh, invest deeply in personal skills. You need to be self-aware of your strengths, your weaknesses. You need to have a strong set of values that you work to, that you live to. You need to understand your comfort zones, your blind spots, and your many biases, because we all are infected by biases uh, because of our upbringing. We've inherited these things from our parents, our grandparents, our families, our work environments, our school environments. There's a whole string of uh, influences that have impacted us over the years. And it's only just starting to rain again, so I might have to get out of the rain, so just bear with me. And uh, the key message that comes from this book, from this authorship, is that you need to empower yourself and you need to be in a position to be able to empower other people. Because being a manager um, is hard. It's hard. As, um, as Scott Morrison says about Albanese, you know, being in leadership is hard, it's really, really hard. Because every day you are ground down. You have to deal, have to deal with the press, with your party, with uh, divergent priorities and uh, you're never ever going to be popular as a leader because you're making tough decisions which are impacting other people impacting other people in a big way but you've got to do it for the benefit of the organization and the benefit of the team in general so um, another thing that i learned early in my day is when i worked at ibm when people talk about equality, it's interesting to understand that to treat people equally, you basically need to treat them differently, else there is no equality, because we don't all have the same skills, the same capabilities, um, in order to bring an even keel and a balance to a, an environment. You need to treat people and situations differently in order for them to feel um, equality. Let me just go out of here, out of the uh, out of the rain. Just bear with me. Just starting to sprinkle. So where are we up to? Um, so the key thing is to empower yourself and to empower others. Uh, as we said, being a manager is hard because you need to deal with people and. Um, and people, as we said, and as we know, are multifaceted and complex, just like a Rubik's Cube. You know, it's only when you have to deal with people, when you have to deal with managers, when you have to deal with subordinates, that you have to deal with customers, that you realise that people are multifaceted and they're complex, just like a Rubik's Cube. And usually, you receive the, the situation and the people when they're all um, mixed up, <laughs> where all the colours are all over the place. Um, and you've got to try and sort it out or figure it out as best you can. So, um, the other thing that the author talks about here is what's important is to understand the sense of uh, interdependence. I remember years ago going to a Steve Covey lecture and I think it was there at the uh, Opera House where Steve Covey was presenting many years ago. Steve Covey, Stephen Covey was the author of uh, The Seven, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and he said that um, when we're born, we're born totally dependent. When we, when we become teenagers, we become in, independent and just want to do things on our own. And when we mature and grow older and grow up, you realise that the highest 
value, the highest position you can take in life is to understand that we need to be interdependent. We need to depend on others and they need to depend on us. So you need to be able to uh, flip-flop and move uh, in a dance between one and the other. Because what we realise is to achieve the great outcomes in our lives, we can't do it alone. We need to do it with others. We need to um, synchronise and uh, orchestrate the abilities of a group and get that group to um, create magic. Um, and the other thing that I've learnt is that uh, we need to harness the differences, the skills that we have within our groups, within our, within our communities, because we're all different. We've all got different God-given talents, God-given skills, God-given skills, and we've got them in different um, doses. Some people have more of one skill, other people have more of the other. Some have less, some have more, some have equal amounts, but we're all different from each other. But those differences, what most importantly is that to understand that we're different for each other. And those differences when blended together um, are what creates magic, what creates uh, synergy, as we've learnt time and time again. Now where one plus one doesn't necessarily equal two, but it could equal three or four. And it's when you see the two oxen or two horses or three horses or four horses banding together in a yoke that uh, we realize that uh, the power of two is much greater than the power of one. And it's not to the power of two, but it's to, to the power of maybe five or six. So you're getting exponential impact and enhanced productivity when you team together and you do things with others. Uh, so another key point that the author makes here about great management is that you know, you, you made it, make it known what success looks like. I remember years ago working for Advantra where we had a fantastic CEO in this startup known, his name was Craig Cameron who came from, from Telstra. And what he, would, what he did come uh, um, KPI time when everybody was putting together their jobs and KPIs and, and objectives for the year is that he gave everybody else in the organization his KPIs and he says this is what I'm being measured by uh, from the board from the board of directors this is the objective that I've been set this is the organizational objective that I've been set and what I want everybody to do in the organization <coughs> is I want you to take these KPIs that I have and cascade them down to each of your team so that each of your team, when you're putting together your KPIs and your objectives, you're answering the one simple question. What am I doing? How am I affecting the KPIs for Craig Cameron, who has KPIs designed for this organization? And I found that really, really profound and really, really powerful. Uh, and the other thing that the author talks about here is that a manager, a leader needs to care, needs to have a care factor, needs to be invested in what they're doing and needs to provide appropriate feedback, both, both positive and negative. But there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a lot more positive feedback than negative feedback because the last thing you want to do is people in your team to feel as if they're not loved, they're not cared for, they don't belong and they don't have a future in the organisation because what they'll do, as what I did time and time again, is just get up and leave when you, once you realise or once you feel as if you're no longer part of the bigger picture. Um, The other thing the author talks about is that great managers have great relationships, great performance relationships with their teams. Not great friendships, but great performance relationships. Because at the end of the day, we're there to do a job and it's up to the manager to make sure that the team as a whole uh, creates value, significant value, and uh, it's done through high performance, 
and achieving performance rather than just friendships, people who are great at uh, going out and having beers and drinks together. And he suggests one-on-one -on -one meetings done weekly where you're talking about things that are going to help the employee, the subordinate, achieve their goals um, rather than just um, going through and identifying what tasks they've done to look a little bit deeper, to look a little bit further in terms of what training, uh, what support, what help can be offered in order to achieve a better outcome um, for, that for that employee. And, uh, and that's basically it at the end of the day, um, creating a sense of belonging to each of your team members. And as the author said here, that at the end of the day, leadership is different to management. Leadership is a, is a quality that people have um, whereas management is um, a, a task to a certain extent, but the, the objective is to, beca to become a leader and to become a manager who has great leadership skills because that's what's going to set you apart from everybody else and make you memorable. And as we said, people won't remember what you said or what you did, but people will remember how you made them feel and as a manager, you can make people feel great about themselves. You can make people feel belong, uh, that they belong. You can make people feel um, uh, appreciated. And you can have a great performance culture, a great performance relationship with each and every team member, knowing that not everybody's the same. Not everybody can be a gun performer, but your job is to bring out the best in your weakest link. Uh, not to be, and to allow the ones who can manage themselves manage themselves and help the others uh, achieve what they can achieve through your um, your um, support and cooperation. Anyway, take care, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club, where we welcome the p and cruise ship to our shores the first time in a couple of years. So uh, times are looking great. Uh, once again, uh, let's hope that we get a great ele uh, election outcome where we can get more of the same um, and allow the party who has been uh, able to get us through this, this terrible pandemic and uh, position us for future success, have another crack at getting it done and um, doing uh, more of what they've been doing. A great job according to, to the way I feel. Anyway, take care. Yasas, have a great Monday. Looks like it's going to be a bit wet. It may blow over, but uh, I think we're in for a wet week. And um, we'll see where it takes us. Take care, everybody. Yasas, and bye for now.